In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Christ is in our midst. In today's epistle to the Corinthians, the, uh, the Apostle Paul talks about using uh, farmer language, using um, agricultural language about those who sow sparingly also reap sparingly. And the image that he's trying to draw for us, of agricultural image, is when a farmer goes out to sow his land with uh, all, he prepares the soil, he gets it all ready, and then he goes out and um, like in another parable Jesus taught, he just throws seed. He throws seal, seed under the cultivated soil. And he knows that the amount of seed matters because ultimately in the end when this seed is cast onto the soil, the hope is, is that at the end of the season, after he keeps the ground um, weeded and the sun and the rain and all the things the Lord provides, that ultimately he'll be able to harvest uh, something. Harvest a, 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 a big harvest, have a good harvest. But what happens when he has a lower harvest? Well, when he has a lower harvest, oftentimes he has less seed. So if you could take a moment to imagine the farmer having less seed. The farmer who has less seed still cultivates the land. He goes out, but there's something in his heart that makes him more stringent with the seed. He doesn't throw as much. Of course, he doesn't have as much to throw. And there's less of a harvest the next year, that year. And so you can see that the cycle that as less and less is harvested, and less as less is given, and less and less is sown, that the person ends, that this, this farmer ends up in a way turning in and not actually all the work that goes into the, the yard or the, the, the ground, all the work that goes into sowing doesn't bear fruit because there's not enough seed. Jesus, of course, doesn't talk about there not being enough seed. Now, this is a spiritual principle in our own lives. And, and, and this, is, this can be interpreted either financially or otherwise. Um, but today, what I would like to talk about more than uh, finances really is the idea of giving of ourselves. Because the ultimate sacrifice that we can make is to actually give of our own self. But to give of our own self, it assumes that we have something to give. And it also assumes that we're not stuck in a cycle, excuse me, a cycle where essentially we feel burnt out and spent. And I don't know about you, but many people nowadays feel like they're caught in that, that same cycle with the farmer without enough seed. They don't have anything to give. They're constantly being asked to give of themselves. And they constantly feel more tired and more sick and more stretched thin. And as Christians, we're not meant to simply be stuck in that sort of perpetual, uh, what, what they call a, cultural of a culture of scarcity where we have nothing within our inner reserves to draw on, nothing to give to others, and therefore we often don't receive much put into ourselves. And of course we don't spend much time putting stuff into ourselves either. The idea within Christianity is that each one of us is called to generosity, to be able to scatter the seed abroad, whether that seed be as I said, monetary, or whether it be a, a self-giving. That our disposition wouldn't be hypertensive with our fists closed and trying to protect ourselves. That our disposition towards the world wouldn't be something of isolation and um, simply keeping what I have so that I have it and no one gets it. But that our disposition would be transformed into some, something generous. And a generous person is described as someone who is open-handed, open-hearted. And you know what's interesting biblically? It doesn't really matter how much you have. 
You don't have to have a lot to be generous. When we hear the story about the widow's might, we see that she gives of what she has generously, regardless of the fact that she doesn't have much. And we can see this actually uh, in many people's lives. I've met many, many generous people, generous with their time, generous with their help, generous with their ear listening, generous with their money. All of these, these same people oftentimes were busy. They didn't have much to give. But there was something within inside their hearts that instead of being closed in, instead of living in a, a scarcity model, was open. It was open. It was receptive. It was, uh, it, it saw, they saw life as something that flowed through them, not something to be grasped onto. So this is the prime import of what I'm saying today, is that this is really about our hearts. Ultimately, we understand the farmer analogy, and we often feel like we live in a place of scarcity, but our hearts need to be cultivated so that they can be generous, so that we have something to give. One of the main things that we can do to cultivate our soil is actually spend time in prayer. Spend time reading the scripture. Spend time trying to draw close to God. One of the reasons why we feel so burnt out and we don't have anything to give is because we expect that our gift would come from only us. And as you pull life out of a finite source, so like myself, as I give life out of myself and give life out of myself, eventually there's nothing to give there because it's just me. But if, as in the life of, of God, with the Holy Spirit residing in us, if we are taught that the life that we're supposed to give others is the life of the Holy Spirit that flows through us, that comes into us and goes out of us, then this is a very different image of of, of, of life and giving. Jesus says that his disciples would have rivers of flowing life coming out of their bosoms. That they would be able to pour into other people. But ultimately, how is it that we're going to do that if we're not actually, in some ways, tending to our own spiritual life? How can we fill others if we don't take the basic time with our basic spiritual pra practices, fasting, prayer, um, reading the scripture, being with God, being, trying to find him, being in his presence. If we don't invest in those things, then ultimately we have nothing to give. Now furthermore, I mean, when we don't invest in those things, the things that we give aren't really that great. The only time that things are really the way they're supposed to be is when we're feeding off of God, consuming Him, receiving Him, being transformed by Him, and then putting it, in, putting it outside of ourselves, bringing it to other people and helping them. Now, if you struggle and you are burnt out, take a little time to Make time for yourself. Pause from all the things that are pushing and pulling you around. Spend some time, five minutes praying. Read some scripture. Do something. Small spiritual practices done on a daily level can bring us out of things. They can help us. They can heal us. I say all this today that ultimately, deep down inside, we're supposed to be in touch with our own hearts. And we should know our own spiritual state. Are we living life closed down, guarded, blocked off from giving, giving life to others? Are we merely trying to preserve ourselves? Are our fists closed? Are we hypertensive? Or do we find ourselves to be generous in heart, forgiving, loving, open, easily, easily able to invest ourselves in others when there is a need that we feel the Lord calls us to. These are all inner conditions of the heart. May our Lord bless us to get in touch with our hearts, 
to cultivate them, to nurture ourselves, to take of the nutrition of Christ and ultimately be able to invest ourselves in others. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Christ is in our midst. Yes.